Despite strong warnings from the international community, North Korea conducted its third nuclear test on February 12th, drawing worldwide condemnation. The UN Security Council passed a new resolution 2094 on North Korea. Today, the Security Council unanimously adopted resolution 2094, strongly condemning North Korea's highly provocative February. Officials say China holds the key in this situation. Will the UN action keep North Korea from pursuing their nuclear ambition? and achieve the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula? We are here at the U.S. Department of Treasury, where we will speak to a top official who is involved in enforcing sanctions on North Korea. David Cohen is the U.S. Treasury Department Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence. Thank you, Mr. David Cohen, for joining us today. My pleasure. The Security Council unanimously adopted Resolution 2094 on March 7th, and it's been about a month. Have there been any changes in implementing the measures? Well, we have been working very actively since the Security Council adopted Resolution 2094 uh, to both implement it here at home and to talk with our partners around the world about the implementation of that resolution. Uh, one of the first steps that we took uh, just a few days after the Security Council adopted the resolution was to impose sanctions on an entity known as the Foreign Trade Bank of North Korea, um, which, as we explained when we took that action, uh, has been involved in helping to facilitate North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile activity. And so we have also been talking with our partners about taking action uh, to uh, sort of complement the actions we have taken uh, in furtherance of the implementation of that resolution. And experts say that the strongest and the most efficient financial sanctions that have been taking place was back in 2005 with BDA. And would you say that the U.S. is considering a similar measure even now? Well, we are looking for ways to uh, intensify the financial pressure on North Korea uh, most importantly, to restrict North Korea's ability to finance its nuclear and ballistic missile program. So the action that was taken in 2005 on Banco Delta Asia was something that was available to us at the time, an action we took in that context. Where we are today is that we are very much focused on doing what we can to disrupt North Korea's ability to continue to uh, develop its nuclear and ballistic missile program. Right. And North Korea's counterfeit, also known as a super note, is known to be circulated in some countries. Is North Korea continuing this type of illicit activity, and how much are they making from that? Well, I don't have any uh, figures that I can share on how much North Korea is earning from uh, the distribution of super note. Uh, we believe that North Korea is continuing to try to uh, to pass supernote into the international financial system. I think it is less of, a, of an issue than it was a few years ago. It seems to have uh, calmed down to some extent, but it's something that continues and something that we are very, very uh, focused on because you know, obviously any nation that is counterfeiting another country's currency is a matter of uh, a very grave concern. Then the funds that the North Korea is bringing in who would you say in North Korea is managing the funds? The 39 Bureau or the military? Well, very good question, uh, something that we are very focused on. As you may know, we have applied sanctions to Office 39, um, and we have applied sanctions to uh, some of the military entities as well. Um, I, I don't think you can say that the funds that are brought in are handled by just one entity within North Korea. Uh, but it is quite clear that the funds that are brought in are directed by the leadership for their illicit activities, and that's what we are, uh, that's what we focus on. There's been, uh, over the years, a lot of interest in trying to identify where there may be Kim family money, uh, you know, in, in very large amounts in accounts, wherever it may be in the world. Uh, I can say that we are very actively uh, 
looking for where that money may be, and if we uh, identify where it is, we'll do everything we can to deprive the Kim family of access to those funds. Right, and some experts have pointed out that cash payment of about $90 million a year to North Korea from South Korea through the Kaesong Industrial Complex could be used to develop nuclear weapons and missiles. Do you share the same concern about that? Well, I know that the Kaesong Industrial Complex is a very important development and something that the South Korean government has, uh, has supported. It's also, uh, in the last week or so, the North Koreans seem to have shut down activity at, uh, at Kaesong. Um, precisely what the North Koreans do with the uh, earnings from Kaesong, uh, you know, I think is something that, uh, that we are concerned about. And all of the hard currency earnings of North Korea is something, obviously, that we should be concerned about. But there's also, uh, you know, there are a number of you know, thousands of North Korean workers at Kaesong who get paid uh, for their services there. And so I think it's a, uh, you know, it's a complicated uh, situation, but a, again, one that I know that the, that the two Koreas have, uh, have worked out and uh, leave it to them to, uh, to decide how to continue with Kaesong. How would you assess the Chinese government's cooperation on sanctions on North Korea? Well, as you may know, I traveled to uh, China a few weeks ago, um, uh, shortly after the Security Council resolution was adopted, uh, to discuss with Chinese counterparts implementation of the resolution and the, the approach to North Korea. Uh, I think the, the Chinese, uh, as I said, are quite intent on implementing the Security Council resolution across the board, which contains provisions that address financial activity, but also uh, shipping activity with North Korea and other activity. Uh, so I think the, the, the Chinese will be, uh, will be implementing this resolution uh, in a robust fashion. Thank you, Mr. Cohen, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, too. That concludes our interview with Mr. David Cohen, Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence. I'm Jennifer Yu, VOA Washington.